Welcome to lesson 4 on hybrid writing. In this lesson, we have two learning objectives. First is to be familiar with the structure of a hybrid essay, or in other words, how the hybrid essay is organized. And secondly is to know how to signpost your essay to show that you have addressed both genres. Now, I mentioned both genres, meaning that there are two genres of writing in a hybrid essay. As the name suggests, a hybrid is a combination between two writing genres. And I can find two ways or two combinations. First is descriptive and reflective or expository because you are discussing what you have described. And there are some ex two examples over there where you might be asked to describe some school-wide events and then discuss some of the lessons you've learned. Or you might be asked to describe your experience of working with others and discuss how it has developed you as an individual and team player. Now, the second way that a hybrid essay can be structured um, could be a combination of personal recount and reflective. So you have examples like write about a conflict. So you're going to tell a story about a conflict that you had and then what are some lessons that you've learned. Or it could be getting you to write about a time someone inspired you uh, to be courageous, for example, and then you would have to discuss um, in what ways the experience grew you as an individual. Okay, so there are two possible combinations. The next thing I'd like to talk about is how do you organize or structure a hybrid essay? I think that's very important as well, right? Because you want to be addressing both genres uh, in roughly equal proportion. So how can you do that? Uh, I have three options. Option A is that for each of your three body paragraphs, BP 1, 2, and 3, you have it in like 50-50 proportion. So you describe and then immediately you reflect on what you've described. Okay, and you repeat that for the other two paragraphs. For option B, um, basically it's uh, slightly skewed towards uh, the reflective portion of the genre, um, where you have BP1 as a description, and then BP2 and BP3, um, you will be reflecting. Okay, option C, okay, um, you actually have four BPs um, where you take two of them to describe and the other two to reflect. You do this um, alternately. Okay, um, so these options are, are related to the descriptive and reflective essay. For the personal recount and reflective, right, uh, the options do not really change, okay, just that it might be a little bit tricky because you have to kind of weave in the reflective bits together with the story you are telling. Alright, it cannot be one long account and then you have a, have a, a conclusion Right, that would not be enough because your reflective portion is probably only 20%. Okay, so today um, I will be discussing a descriptive and reflective combination right, of hybrid essay. And the question we are considering today is describe a place which means a great deal to you. Why is it so important to you? Okay, and I will be using the structure of option A, meaning my three paragraphs will be structured in the same way or similarly where I describe and then I reflect. Okay, so let's get this going. Um, just so you know, on the left hand margin or column, I have the structure. How are the two writing genres sort of addressed in turn? Okay, where they are addressed. And then the writing tips are basically how can you make uh, your essay more descriptive, more vivid. Okay, because after all, it's asking you to describe this place which, which means a great deal to you. And descriptive details must be obvious. Okay, they must stand out. It's not just telling a story, right? Okay. Um, and at the same time, relating back to one of our learning objectives where um, you have to know how to signpost your essay, I will be showing you as well 
under the writing tips column on the right, uh, where are these signposts? All right. So let's start. Uh, in the first paragraph here, I wrote that uh, it is a descriptive start because as you look at it, it is very, it is full of vivid details. Um, it starts by saying, by pure muscle memory, I walk 57 steps along the familiar pavement to my favourite spot on the sloping stone wall. You notice there are very specific details, right? 57. Um, familiar pavement, not just the pavement. Favourite spot, sloping stone wall. Okay, planting myself there firmly. And then I have all these uh, words and phrases in red that uh, are actually very deliberate descriptions, a specific descriptions of the, of the place um, that you are talking about. Okay, let me highlight uh, the description of, of uh, water, okay, that has been personified. Can you find those words and phrases? Okay, so which words personify water as a dancer? Okay, the answers are retreats, okay, um, admire, chuckles, okay, so these are human qualities that the writer has ascribed to water, personifying it as a dancer, okay? And then uh, all the other words in, and phrases in red are really actually precise descriptions by using uh, adjectives and adverbs, things like be beating rhythmically, adverb, teal blue splash marks, adjective, familiarly, welcomingly, all these are adverbs, okay? Um, and you also note that he has used a rule of three, so hulking container ships, small yachts, queen sampans. All right. Um, I've just a reminder. I've actually bolded these words in red. Uh, it's for you to go find out their meaning. Okay. Now moving on to BP one, you realize I have here labeled reflective one, descriptive one. Here's where the 50-50 goes. Okay, um, at the start of the paragraph, um, the writer says, this place means so much to me simply because. Right? You notice that means so much is another way of saying important, so important to you. Okay, so here is what I call a sign post. Okay, this is the signpost because it flags up to the reader or to the examiner examiner that you are addressing the second part of the question, why the place is so important to you. Okay, and the reason given is it has featured constantly throughout my life. How, why, the writer goes on to say that when I was 10 years younger, chasing my older brothers along the pavement, playing on the stone wall, drawing near the water. This was what um, he had been doing or he, he was doing um, 10 years ago. And then he said, even after growing up, that's where he sort of brings us back to the present and says, this remains my favourite haunt. It was and continues to remain my favourite haunt. Um, and he gives very vivid descriptions, right, that um, he would be laughing hysterically. Um, he feels tranquil, um, but you notice this very elegant expression, blanket of tranquility, as if you are filled with peace, okay? Um, there is a contrast to boisterous, noisy um, shopping malls, and you can spend a languid hour okay, on this very stone wall. So you realise that he weaves in the descriptions as um, he elaborates on his experience and why this has been a constant feature in his life. Okay, so ref, uh, reflective two and descriptive two are in BP2. It's also in a sort of 50-50 proportion. Very similar structure to BP1. Okay, this waterfront is so important to me. It's, it's the same word important in the question. 
Okay, so it's very obvious. It's, it's a signpost. Okay, um, because it is where I come to process my emotions. That's reason number two. Um, every time he's angry, every time he's devastated after, for example, failing an English test, he would he would go to this place, you know, um, and and his anger and disappointment would wilt away, would melt away. Uh, he feels a sense of peace washing over him, and he's purged of all undesirable feelings. Um, such um, beautiful descriptions, right, of, of describing, um, of showing how um, he's, he's, he's able to process his emotions, he's able to think things through um, by just putting himself there near the water. Okay, so metaphors and similes really help you to express emotions and abstract ideas in vivid ways for your readers. Um, for example, the sensation of peace is compared to the movement of water like washing over like a blanket, as we saw in the previous paragraph. Okay, the last um, body paragraph. Okay, here you realize that the reflective bit actually dominates. Okay, because he, he says, it has become all the more meaningful for me because, unfortunately, of or unfortunately, you are going to go away, you're going to move to somewhere else and, and this waterfront may not um, be as close to you or it, you, you might not be able to come here anymore. Okay, and so this is signpost number three. And you realize it's, it's not so much descriptive as it is reflective because um, you realize he, he has sort of um, shown some resignation. Like I also know that change is imminent. Um, it's it's um, it's inevitable. Uh, the prospect that things may never be the same again instills quite some fear in me. Okay, and um, and considering that these retreats to my haven are numbered, they become all the more precious. It's always that way, right? The absence makes the heart grow fonder. Uh, when you know you're gonna lose something, you kind of cling on to it all the more. And I guess this is what the, the writer's feeling is. He reflects on what he's written so far in the first two paragraphs. Okay, or even in the introduction. So it's a really cool way to sort of um, um, pull everything together um, on this reflective streak. Now finally, in the conclusion, he says that I'm moving away. He gives a hint, right? He gives a, a, a hint as to why he might be moving away because of encroaching urban redevelopment. This place is going to be uh, pulled down um, and re redeveloped. He has no choice. Okay, he has been evicted, so to speak, um, from this place. Um, and once again, he reiterates that I can acknowledge how deeply significant it is to me. And he holds this place close to my heart. Words that echo and reiterate what the question is in the first place. And descriptions are peppered everywhere. Right? So, um, I hope that this essay has served as a good um, example for how you can be structured about this by having uh, a portion of, of description followed by a portion of reflection. But of course, you don't have to stick to it in this, in this rigid way. Okay, but make sure that you you constantly describe if it's required of you and there is a constant reflection going on. So that's the end uh, of our lesson. Thank you.